Would you trust a friend who warned you about your partner, only to end up dating that friend? That's the confusing situation I find myself in. After four years with Julie, she suddenly wanted a break to figure out her feelings about marriage. Her friend Mindy warned me about Julie's doubts, offering support that led to an unexpected hookup. Now, Julie claims Mindy manipulated her into breaking up with me, I'm torn between believing Julie or Mindy and unsure if I emotionally cheated by moving on so quickly. Am I the asshole for how I handled this? I, 28M, am really confused about the events of the last month. My ex-GF Julie, 29F, thinks that my current GF Mindy, 28F, is manipulative and sabotaged our four-year relationship. I was in a loving relationship with Julie for the last four years. We met through some mutual friends. Julie and I were very compatible in our love for outdoor activities and running. We have very similar lifestyles and supported each other well for the last four years. We have also been living together for the last three years. We even discussed getting married during the summer. Everything was great, and I was planning to propose to her over the holidays. However, I started to see changes in Julie's behavior around September. She was acting distant and looked stressed. It was quite noticeable, and I was worried. I trust her with all my heart, and I could not imagine she would be cheating on me. However, she did spend more time by herself. Around the same time, Julie's friend Mindy messaged me privately and asked me if I could meet her secretly, as she wanted to tell me something about Julie. Mindy and Julie work together, and I have known Mindy since I started dating Julie. I was surprised but to be honest, I assumed the worst. I met her at a cafe after work. She asked me if things were going okay between Julie and me. She told me that Julie told her that she was planning to leave me soon. This was a total shock to me I asked her if there was anyone else that Julie was interested in, and she told me she was not interested. Julie confided in her that she was not sure about marrying me. She told me she just had to tell me this, as she did not want me to be blindsided. I was devastated. I started putting more effort into making our relationship more exciting, planning more dates, etc. Mindy also helped me through this time, and told me more about what Julie had told her. Eventually, before Thanksgiving, Julie told me that she loved me, but she wanted to take a break for a month to live alone. She said she just wanted to live alone for a month to ensure she wanted to marry me I was completely heartbroken. I asked her if she wanted to pursue someone else. She told me that was not the case, and I better not do anything stupid either. She loves me with all her heart, but she just wants to stay away from me to make sure that she is marrying me for love and not because she is used to being with me I did not understand that at all. I told her that if she is not sure after four years if she wants to marry me, then maybe we should just break up. We had a big fight and broke up after a few days. As our lease was ending, we decided to part ways in December. She got a new apartment and I kept our old apartment and just took her name off the lease. After the breakup, I was feeling very lonely, as I was not used to being in the apartment alone. I didn't want to keep being sad and invited many friends for a New Year's party. I also invited Mindy. We had a good time and my friends were doing their best to cheer me up. Mindy also mingled with my friends and it was good. Mindy decided to stay back to help me clean up and we hooked up that night. I felt guilty, but Mindy did cheer me up. Since then, we have hung out almost daily at my place. I am still sad about Julie, but I won't lie. Being with Mindy makes me feel happy. She is sweet and caring. Last Sunday, we woke up and someone was banging on the door. I went to open it and it was Julie. She looked furious and started yelling at me. She kept on accusing me of cheating on her. I told her I most certainly did not cheat on her, and she was the one who broke up with me. Mindy was also at my apartment. Julie was just angry at both of us. She started calling Mindy a manipulative bitch, and told me that Mindy was the one who suggested to her that she should take some time away from me to understand her true feelings. I calmed her down and asked her to explain herself. She told me that ever since our marriage talk, she had told Mindy about it, and Mindy kept on asking Julie if she was sure about marrying me. Mindy suggested she take some time to herself to understand her true feelings and that I would understand and give her space. When I said no, Mindy convinced her that I was so controlling that I could not even give her one month to herself and convinced her to break up with me. Mindy told me that she did not say such things, 
These were all Julie's ideas, and she was just there during these conversations. She did tell Julie that she told me about some of the things so that I get a chance to make things right with her over the last few months. That made Julie more angry, and she started accusing me of emotionally cheating on her. Julie told me that the last few weeks have made her realize that we were meant to be together, but she now cannot believe I could move on from a four-year relationship in a week. On one hand I want to believe Julie, but she broke up with me for no fault of my own. Mindy was there for me when I was down, but now I also doubt her. She suddenly started talking to me out of the blue as we were never really close before, and she immediately became my support after the breakup, although Julie was her close friend. Am I to ought to emotionally cheat on Julie? Should I have told her about Mindy's texts? Should I not have moved on from her so quickly, even though Julie broke up with me? I was just hurting, and Mindy was right there to support me I need advice from someone with a clear mind on what the fuck is going on. I, 28M, posted last week regarding my girlfriend Julie, 29F, accusing her friend and co-worker Mindy, 28F, of sabotaging our relationship. Julie broke up with me in December, after a four-year relationship, and Mindy reached out to me when I was feeling down. However, when Julie realized Mindy was talking to me, she confronted both of us last Sunday morning and told me that Mindy manipulated her to break up with me. The worst part was I was not thinking straight after the breakup and ended up hooking up with Mindy after New Year's party. After the incident, I asked Mindy if I needed some time and did not meet her. Since then, I have made the following post on Reddit and 3,000 people have called me an idiot. I am sorry for the long post, but I wanted to say that we were not idiots to not see what happened. You guys read an abridged version of events in 5 minutes while we lived it for the last 7 months. I have messaged Julie every day since then to try to talk to her. She did not reply to my messages. I was not sure if she blocked me. Mindy constantly tried to message me, asking if we could meet and discuss it. On Wednesday, one day after posting, I decided to message Mindy. I told her to tell me everything she said to Julie truthfully. I told her I would go to NC if I found out that she was lying. Mindy wanted to meet me in person or talk to me on the phone, but I wanted everything in writing. She messaged me that Julie always said good things about me for all these years. When Julie told her about us talking about getting married in 2024, she was happy for both of us. However, Julie started telling her that she had cold feet and was not sure if she wanted to marry me because of issues she observed about her parents' marriage. One day, Julie told her she wanted to take a break from me. She was not sure about her true feelings for me. That was the time Mindy told me about Julie's behavior as she felt bad for me, as we were already telling our families about the engagement plans. After our fight, she said Julie was extremely upset and told Mindy she would never marry me. She said that Julie came back only when she heard that I was moving on, as she was jealous of us. She also said that I was a good guy and hopefully, I will see what we have that is special. I just said okay and told her I needed time. I kept messaging Julie once a day to talk to her at least once. It was heartbreaking to think that she may have blocked me and may never talk to me again. On Friday afternoon, Julie finally replied. She said she wanted to meet me and told me she would come to our apartment on Saturday afternoon. I cleaned the place up and was just feeling deep guilt from inside before facing her. When she came in, she looked like a shell of herself and completely broken. I sat on our sofa but she chose to sit away from me. We asked how we both were, but it was clear that none of us were doing well. I started apologizing but she stopped me. She asked me to let her finish and not to interrupt her. She had brought her little notebook and written down things she wanted to tell me. She told me that she truly loved me, but after we discussed getting married, she started feeling scared of the next big step. She thought those feelings were normal and would go away. So, she decided to not discuss her concerns with me. It kept eating her from inside, and she made a mistake in talking to Mindy about them. She said that she wanted to say everything to me now, so I didn't get second-hand information about why she was distant and broke up with me. She said that her parents had a very rocky marriage, though they were together until her mom passed away in 2021 during the pandemic. Her parents argued constantly, and she always thought her mom did not love her dad. 
However, her mom was extremely dependent on him for everything, and her dad knew it, and hence, didn't treat her well. She never wanted to be like her mom after the marriage. However, as we lived together, she started seeing some of those issues in our relationship. For example, when we met, Julie had a lot of credit card debt and was bad at managing her money. I helped her with that. Even though we have separate finances, I managed all her finances, investments, etc. At a request to the point that she did not know or understand exactly where her money was. She also said that we enjoy making nice dinner meals every day. However, whenever I work late, she completely loses any motivation to cook and ends up eating cheese and crackers like a toddler for dinner. She also complained that in the last four years of our relationship, I have never said no to her for buying anything. She feels that I coddle her, and she just got comfortable with all the luxuries and things I can provide for her. She talked about this with Mindy, and while Mindy initially just listened to her, she told her around September that one of her cousins also had the same issue. She decided to stay away from her fiancé for a month, and within a week, she realized how much she missed him and never had doubts again. When Julie asked for a break, she only wanted to live with her best friend for a few weeks to see if she was too codependent on me. She knew I was planning to propose during our Christmas trip to my parents' house, and when I told her that she could not take a break, she just freaked out and broke up with me, as she did not want to be engaged without knowing for sure that we won't end up like her parents. After this, she asked me when I started meeting Mindy and how many times we had met. I opened my chat messages with Mindy and handed her the phone. I told her I met Mindy only once in September, where she told me that Julie wanted to break up with me because she was not happy with our relationship. I already had noticed Julie's distant behavior, and when I asked her, I only got an answer, I am fine, we are fine. Due to my insecurities I tried to hold on to Julie and started coddling her more, planning more expensive dates, and trying to spend more time at home. When Julie asked me for a break and to stay away from me for a few weeks, I thought that was the final step before the breakup, and I broke down and fought with her, which led to our breakup and her moving out. At this point Julie's voice started cracking up. She asked me when Mindy contacted you after the breakup. I pointed her to the messages. Mindy initially just started sending me memes to cheer me up, and I just used to respond with thanks or thumbs up. However, the messages started getting more frequent, and she offered to talk to me if I needed help. She asked me what I was doing for Christmas and New Year's, and when I told her I was inviting a few friends, she told me that she did not have any plans for New Year's, so I invited her. Julie stopped me there. She told me she did not need to hear the details after that. She told me that when she moved out of our house after our fight, she thought she was not ready to marry me. She stayed with her friend for two weeks and then got her new apartment in January. She told me that she was miserable and missed me badly. It became more acute when she moved into the apartment alone and could not stay there for even one night. Her best friend is currently staying with her in the new apartment. She realized she could not live without me within a week of living there. When she asked one of our mutual friends on Saturday how I was doing, she told her about the party and that Mindy was there. It did not make sense to her why Mindy would be at the party. She concluded that Mindy and I were having an affair during our relationship, and that was the reason Mindy must have tried to break us apart by constantly telling her that she should not get married if she had doubts. She completely broke down when she saw Mindy in our apartment on Sunday. However, when she learned that Mindy was also talking to me, and telling me the opposite things, she realized how naive she was to throw everything away without properly talking to me first. As hurt as she is seeing me with Mindy, she also does not want to lose me. She kept calling herself an idiot and apologizing for not telling me about her concerns sooner. I sat next to her and tried to hug her, but she moved away. She asked me if I was still willing to be together, and I told her I would give her anything to get her back. She told me she was willing to forget what happened but had a few conditions. Her first condition was that I cut contact with Mindy. I blocked her everywhere and never contacted her again. If I see her standing in front of me, I act as if she is invisible. I was okay with that. Secondly, she has already signed up for individual therapy and is on the waitlist. She wants us to do couples therapy so that we can talk about all the concerns we have and work through them. We also decided to hold off our engagement or marriage until we both can get into couples therapy. I was also okay with that too. 
Finally she wanted me to forget the last month as a bad nightmare, and never talk about it again. And if I ever make a we were on a break joke, she will punch me in the face. This was the first time we both smiled. I asked her what she was gonna do about Mindy as they worked together. She said the biggest punishment for Mindy is to know that she did not succeed in breaking us up. She wants Mindy to see how happy she is with me. She wants Mindy to be there when she flaunts her engagement ring in the office and gets jealous when we get married. We hugged, and I felt so relieved that I had a chance to make things right for her. I asked her to stay and she agreed. The rest of the evening was nice. We ordered DoorDash and watched reruns of Top Chef while cuddling on our couch. In the morning, we discussed moving in back together. I want her to move back to our old apartment, but she wants a fresh start and asked me if I am willing to move into her new apartment. Her new apartment is tiny compared to our current apartment and also not in the best neighborhood, but we will talk about it more and decide. I will also have to deal with the issue of having two 12-month leases and how to get out of one of them. Julie is going to her apartment after lunch to get some of her stuff for the week, and I am writing this post. I am just so lucky that I did not lose Julie despite my terrible actions during the last month. I just hope that I will be able to work things out and get married soon, and this whole incident is a small bump in our perfect relationship. I also don't know how to address the issue where she feels coddled by my behavior and feels like I am making her codependent on me. It's just my personality and I need to work on it during couples therapy. However, any tips from you guys on how to make her feel less codependent are welcome. P.S. Thanks to everyone who checked on my health during the last few days via direct messages and sent me numbers for helplines. Don't worry. I'm a marathon runner, so don't give up that easily. I wrote a few posts six months ago regarding breaking up with my then fiance Julie because she asked me for a break and then hooking up with her friend Mindy. It turned out that Mindy was the one who encouraged Julie to ask me for a break and also befriended me and told me about Julie's intentions in advance. They were the worst few weeks of my life, but Julie and I reconciled and got back together. A lot of you have been asking me for an update, and I feel this is a good time to give a final update. After the incident Julie told me that she wanted to get back together and forget about the whole thing, but I could see that she was still hurt by my behavior. I tried not to love bomb her and give her space, as that was why we broke up in the first place. Julie had a mental breakdown and had a panic attack during the week after she saw Mindy with me in our apartment. She got an online therapist who she still sees once a week. We also looked for couples counseling and were able to see one almost a month after the incident. We decided to put our plans for marriage on hold until then. I could feel that Julie was making a lot of effort to act normally but something was not right. I was optimistic about us, but my actions made it hard to see her suffer. During our first couple's counseling session, we opened up about our relationship and discussed the incident. Julie apologized to me for not communicating what was in her mind and how bad she felt for putting me through all the drama. She told me that she did not know how to process her thoughts, did not want to unload all her negative feelings on me, and panicked at the moment. I also apologized to her about everything, at one point, we were competing with who would take bigger blame for what happened. There were a lot of tears, and I found the experience very healing. The counselor told us that she could see how much we love each other, and that we should take baby steps toward talking to each other about what is in our minds. She gave us some exercises to do after going home and discussing certain things. When we left her office, I was sure I wanted to spend my life with Julie. I told her that and she said that she could not imagine a life without me. We decided to go ahead with our wedding plans. Mindy tried to contact me several times. She messaged me, but Julie blocked her on my phone and all social media. She also contacted Julie and sent her some nasty messages. The worst was 15 days after the incident, when Mindy started posting pictures of me and her on Instagram every day. Some of those photos were intimate, non-nude and it caused a lot of pain to Julie. Julie reported her to HR and got a transfer and promotion to a different department after a month. The last I heard from Mindy was when she sent me a long email on my work email, but I deleted it without reading it. The photos Mindy posted did cause a lot of drama, and we had to explain to our parents and friends what happened during that time. 
As you all may have guessed, I was unanimously nominated for the Idiot of the Year Award, but I am sure my sister would give me a good run for it before the year ended. The whole issue lasted for a month, and then we never heard from Mindy again and just moved on with our lives. Julie has been talking to her therapist about her codependency issues and concerns. I think it's childhood trauma, and the therapist feels that it might have been amplified after her mother's sudden death. I've been trying to help Julie slowly take an interest in our finances, recommend Ramit Sithe podcast, but she is allergic to money talks and always changes the subject. I was able to break the lease that Julie signed by paying some penalty, and we stayed in our old apartment. However, Julie wanted to move out of it as soon as possible because of the bad memories. We purchased a single-family home a few months ago in a nice suburb and moved there in May. I don't think that the issue of codependency is resolved, and it probably may have increased after the incident, but I love her and will always be there for her when she needs me. On to the main update. Julie and I got married last Saturday in a nice, intimate ceremony held at my father's country club. All our family and friends were present, and I could not have asked for a better evening. I wish I could share photos of Julie in her wedding dress because she looked stunning. We planned to leave for our honeymoon next week, and I could not have been happier about how things turned out. Hopefully, in 25 years, Julie and I will look back at this incident as a small blip in our perfect life.